All right, here we go. The less is more philosophy by Ted Rosenquist. You know him, you love him, you can't live without it. But the concept again, get the ball off the hand going towards the lane. With the soft fingers, look at the fingers open up. Project the ball onto the lane. So there's where it lands, but it's got a nice projection angle to it. Okay, and that's what we're after. It's not about lay it down on the ground. It's about throw it to the ground. And then keep soft with the fingers. And open-handed. Long-armed. Nice 45-degree angle with that back leg. Through the face with the arm. Look at that. Pin yourself in the jaw with your bicep. Glad that's not me. Okay, and again, nice. Look how strong that position is right there. So even though we're we're trying to flatten the wrist out here in the front and get you know less is more, and look how flat your wrist is there at the beginning. Your natural thing is to do what you do, and there it is. But coming back down, everything flattens out, and now we get more than the average bear with you doing less so far as your physical output of what your potentials are. And again, the front view from that is right here. So again, you got the Mark Roth crank, but again, you get to the hit zone and everything comes Right up the back of it. Maybe just a little bit harder with the fingers than I'd like, but again, it's not, you can, you can do more, let's put it that way. But I love the way the ball gets on the lane. Soft with the hand, soft with the fingers, and then just a nice smooth roll. Again, that ball's revving, you're getting good, solid three and a half, four revs through the front part of the lane. That's gotta be close to 400 RPM, uh, if not, 500. Again, four revs on the first part of the lane is going to be 500 revs RPM all the way through. But there's no effort there, is there? There's no grunting going on. It's just straight through, nice and smooth. Stay on it and watch the ball go down the lane for all it's worth. And that's what you're always trying to do is put it, come up with that scenario. Comparisons. We used uh, a couple of pros. Uh, Touring Pros, we used uh, Low Shutter. Let's see if we can find another version of him. That's 05 of 10, so this is five months after that. Maybe he got better. He's definitely playing deeper inside. But again, he's kind of a, just a nice, let the let gravity have it. Yeah. That's what I was trying to do with my draw. Yeah. Yeah. Because his drop seems like he almost pushes it down. Yep. You know what I mean? But he's got again he's got a he's got a version of that elbow like you got. Coming back down, you're gonna right inside to around it. But you you're more hand than he is. He's more elbow maybe coming into that right there. Yeah. And the shoulders. Are, well, actually, he's not even using his shoulders. It's more of his arms, isn't it? Yeah, his shoulders are real quiet. I don't See, that's, that's the one thing I don't like about Chris's game is look at all the shoulder that's exposed over here versus your shoulder being all the way underneath. So, to me, that this produces a natural inside-out direction where he... He uses angle. He's got lots of angle coming in, but he's aiming the ball more towards the outside versus you just got to let it go. It's going to go there. So, again, I'm just telling you why I like your game, McClellan. Nothing. Side view. Love his game. But he's going to, again, a high power game. So, again, he's more of the Jason Couch swing plane which isn't you at all. 
but I love his game. Dougie Kent, uh, Belmonte, Cat Sterner, Kelly, Palermo, who else we got? Brash. Yeah. I think we did good with Sterner. Um, front view of him. Just really like, again, just a very, I don't know, unassuming kind of a guy. Again, he's not really in your face in, in any way, shape, or form, whether it's personality or, you know, his, his game is very aggressive, but it's still passive, isn't it? Just out for a little walk in the park. Crossover step, nice. Drop it into the slot. He's a little bit to the outside, but he's going to tuck it in right there. You see how the ball kind of tucks in right here? So he got a little figure eight. And then he goes at it right there. So in that regard there, he's got a little Tommy Jones in him. But his hand isn't as strong as your hand. So he, the elbow is what equalizes his rev rate to your rev rate. But again, just peace out. Certainly goes inside. He's got wonderful angle right here and wonderful angle right there. And the ball does a really good job of getting underneath him as opposed to what we saw Low Shedder doing. This, this angle right here is not nearly as much as what we see here or we see you doing. And I'm a proponent of what you do and what Jason does. And not that I am against this, but I just think that, that there, well, there's. I'm sure he fixed that from I hope so, because right now I, I would see that as a, as a real That's flaw. One, yeah. I'd see that as a flaw. And usually, you're, and again, if you look back at his history, he gets to the show a lot, but his flaws show up under pressure. And, again, getting to the show was not pressure for him. Winning the championship was pressure. And that's when we saw him not be able to perform uh, under the pressure. And, again, Barnes overthinks it. I just think that, that Chris just had a flaw in his game that showed up under pressure. And he just wasn't able to, to pull off the, the important shot when he needed to. And again, I think you getting yourself under pressure, if you can just, again, just maintain that less is more attitude throughout that throughout that pressure point where you're feeling, well, yeah, I got to have it to win. You know, th that's what a pressure shot is, isn't it? I got to have it to win. To me, that's a pressure shot. And ninth and tenth frames are when those those come out to, to play. And that's when you've got to really be focused between the ears and, and rely on the concept of, especially if that's what got you there. You know, that, that mentality is what got you there. That's when you got to really get in tune with it and continue to use it and not let your mind wander off and go somewhere else because it'll want to. Trust me. So if you get yourself into that position and, you know, the key to the, key to me, the mental game is to not deviate from your mental process. This is what I've been doing. Just keep doing it. It's just, an, in reality, it's just another shot, okay? But in true reality, it's the shot between winning and losing. But in, in, in total reality, it's just another shot. Treated just like the first frame. Yep. And, you know, give yourself a chance. And, you know, to me, that's what I've always tried to do whenever I've, I've shot for a 300 game was just relax. You know, don't, don't add pressure to yourself. Just stay as focused as what you were with your mental process but just give into it and, and you know don't tighten up but in fact relax a little bit more and and rely on the fact that everything that you've been doing has been working out give it one more chance okay and don't get in the way of it love it yeah see again he's he's kind of throwing it over his toe a little bit Yeah, ball. yeah. But it's not true. It looks like it looks like he's just doing so much more. To well, it. I think that's the he's got more swirl in the ball than what you do. You know what I mean? I mean, just the, how much effort he looks like he's doing compared to what I'm doing. It looks. Well, yeah, like that. He's just hammering on at the bottom, and then I just look like I'm up there just trying to shoot a spare. Like yeah, 
Yeah. I mean, really, it doesn't look like I'm trying hard. No, but if somebody else was looking at you, they would probably have a different view. But they haven't seen you go the other way either. If you know, in that same scenario, if they saw you actually go after one and then saw this version of you. Now I can I can agree with that. But to me, he looks very calm and, yeah, and collective. Solid. Yeah, just very leveraged. Yeah, just very leveraged. Yeah, and he's not you know tonguing it out or puffing his cheeks or blowing smoke or anything like that. But again, yeah, he's just making a shot. And that's what you're doing. You're making a shot. Look at the knee. Up. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. So less is more. That's the concept. Let the ball lay in your hand. Actually, uh, we got your, trying to get your fingers from pointing over there at 10 o'clock to more towards the pins and getting your thumb to be more towards the 11 o'clock mentality and your fingers will probably go towards 11 o'clock. So we're going 11 one o'clock, eleven o'clock, if you will, thumb to fingers, yeah. as opposed to three o'clock, nine o'clock, or two o'clock, ten, or four o'clock, ten o'clock. Just less, you know. Just let the ball lay there, and and you're going to do what you do at the bottom of the swing anyway, and that will be more than the average bear, but more importantly, it, it, it allows you to have a, a, a great deal of energy without an excessive amount of ball motion that you've got to make sure you got enough room for. And then that just gets in the way, and that's why. That's why Barnes is Barnes, is he's got that combination of Walter Ray ball motion with Tommy Jones rev rate. Pretty damn good combination, and that's what I'm seeing out of you right now. So let's take it for a ride and see where it takes us. What do you say?